Holy Week is a blessed and sacred opportunity to walk with Jesus during the last few days of his life. For three years since his baptism and desert retreat of 40 days, Jesus gathered his apostles and called his disciples to follow him. He fed the physical and spiritual needs of the crowds who heard of his preaching the good news. He forgave sinners, cured people who were crippled, blind or deaf, and raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus challenged his followers to love God and others as themselves, doing the will of his Father, our Father in heaven. During these days, from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday, we are to walk faithfully with Jesus on the way of the cross, so that we know he walks with us in our time of need, when we are afraid, when we feel lonely, and when we need a Savior. Heart 
Place yourself in the crowd in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. You are there with your family, your wife, your husband, your children, staying close to each other because there are so many people along the road. It is sunny and hot as you look up and see palm branches being pulled from high above you. People are lining the road, laying their cloaks on the ground, and waving the branches, singing Hosanna in the highest. You stretch to see Jesus on a donkey. Put your daughter on your shoulders so she can see him too, and you all begin to shout, Hosanna in the highest, with the rest of the people around you. You feel the joy and excitement. There is so much energy and high emotion with so many people chanting, Hosanna in the highest. You've heard about Jesus from some family and friends, but this is the first time you have seen him for yourself. He looks calm and serene, almost embarrassed by the shouts and attention placed upon him. You come to believe he is a special person who seems respected by everyone around you. You are filled with comfort and peace as you begin to believe this is who the people say he is, the Son of God, the one who will save Israel and all the people. Hosanna in the highest.
A friend knocks on your door late one night, whispering your name so she doesn't wake up your children. You open the door and welcome her into your kitchen, taking your seats at the table. Softly, she begins to tell you about her evening. She works for a local cook who had to make Passover dinner for a group of men in an upper room down the street. Your friend tells you she thought this would be just another dinner where she poured wine, served food, and cleaned up after the guests left. This was no ordinary dinner. She noticed something different as they came into the room. They were really kind and spoke lovingly to each other, respectful and caring in their looks and words. Not wanting to intrude, your friend told you how she waited in a small service room but heard the man whom they called Master, instruct them that if they wanted to be great, they had to serve. And then he washed their feet. There wasn't a sound in the room. Your friend peeked around the corner and saw a few of the guests with tears in their eyes. The Master told them they had to do the same. They had to serve others. Then the master celebrated the Passover, but added more words than are normal. He said the bread he gave them was his body, and the wine he offered them was his blood, and they should do this in memory of him. Then he talked with them about him going ahead of them to prepare a place for them, and they knew the way. One of the guests questioned him, saying he didn't know the way. The master responded that he was the way, the truth, and the life. As your friend heard these words, she believed in her heart this was a special man who wanted his friends to be calm and not afraid, and your friend felt peace and wanted to share that peace with you.
You and your brother Simon are walking in Jerusalem on Friday afternoon. He and his family are visiting from Cyrene for Passover. You haven't seen each other for a year, and it feels good to catch up and have the families together again. As you walk, you both sense commotion ahead and are curious. You hear yelling and shouting that sounds angry. You both wonder if you should maybe head back to your house, but are drawn to see what is going on. There are many people lining the narrow walk between homes and shops. You see the helmets of Roman guards and spears above the heads of the people in front of you. You make your way between people to stand along the walkway. You see a bearded man with long hair struggling to carry a huge cross. He has blood dripping down his face, trickling to the ground. The guards are hitting the man and spitting on him and telling him to hurry up. People across the way from you 
and Simon are calling the man Jesus. You have heard of him and know some of his followers as you see them in the crowd. Carrying the cross, Jesus struggles and falls to the ground in complete exhaustion. The guards yell and kick him while he is laying on the ground. They pick up the cross, and one of the guards grabs Simon, almost hitting you with a whip. They pull Simon toward the cross and tell him to carry it. Simon takes the cross, getting blood all over his hands and on his tunic. The guards pick up Jesus to follow Simon, carrying the cross. You try to keep up with them as you let Simon know you are close by. Simon carries the cross and passes a number of crossroads. Eventually, the guards take the cross from Simon and give it back to Jesus. Simon rejoins you, and you both run back to your house to talk about what has just happened. How did they choose Simon out of the crowd? Simon feels so many emotions. Frustration that he couldn't have helped Jesus more. Anger at the guards and how they were treating Jesus. Sadness that people had to witness such violence and anger. You assure Simon that his help was comforting to Jesus. Señor, 
Early on Sunday morning, your cousin knocks hard on your door, waking you up and immediately making you worry that something terrible has happened. Your heart races and your hand is shaking as you open the back door. She grabs your hand and says you have to come with her. You find your cloak and go quickly. As she is between walking fast and running, she explains that she is meeting her friend at the tomb. You heard of the tomb yesterday from a neighbor, but were afraid to ask any questions. Now you are going to find out about the tomb and see it for yourself. You both make your way over a hill and alongside a creek. It is beautiful and sunny without a cloud in the sky. Moving fast through a grove of fruit trees, you turn to the right and there before you is a huge rock and your cousin puts her arm out, stopping you from going any further. She tells you this is where they laid the body of Jesus, the one she had been following for a year or so, listening to his teachings and witnessing his miracles and healings. She had come to believe what he said, that God was his father, and he would die and rise in three days. You both approached the open tomb slowly and looked inside. Only some white burial cloths laid on a flat white stone. Your cousin is worried that someone has taken the body of Jesus. She has many questions and no answers. She takes your hand and begins to walk out of the tomb when you both see what looks like a person glowing bright above the ground who says... Peace be with you. Your cousin recognizes the voice and says with great love, Jesus, is that you? He again says, Peace be with you. You and your cousin feel great peace and comfort seeing Jesus again. Dust and the ashes you called us by name to you, Lord, I return. Wounded and lost, weighed down in our shame to you, Lord, I return. 
Let us pray without ceasing and not count the cost, laying our lives on the cross in the service of others. No longer the same to you, Lord, I return. All of my heart, my life and soul to your will and not my own. Take back what you gave, I surrender it all to you, Lord, I return. pathway to freedom, fulfillment, and grace. To you, Lord, I return. Cure every illness, feel mercy's embrace. To you, Lord, I return. Let us run to the Father, his arms open wide. Come home to the love in his eyes. No more darkness or doubt when we look on God's face. To you, Lord, I return. All of my heart, my life, and soul to your will and not my own. Take back what you gave, I surrender. Come to the well, every need will be met. No more are we bound by death. Through the love on the cross, we are raised to new life. To you, Lord, I return. All of my heart, my life, and soul to your will. Surrender it all to you, Lord, I return. All of my heart, my life, and soul to your will and not my own. Take back what you gave, I surrender.